Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy, and I help people with their breakups. And today, I don't have a breakup story to share, but I have some knowledge to kick to you guys. And this is actually a really interesting topic because you want to prepare for your ex to come back, right? A lot of people, what if my ex comes back? What if my ex comes back? Uh, should I do this? Should I do that? If they contact me, if they do this, this is actually going to be a really, really good piece of advice for you. So please listen up. This is really, really good advice for you. <clears throat> and the good part about this advice is it's flexible, it's versatile, and it gives you the ability to maneuver a little bit. It's not rigid. And if you take it on, it works. Now, here's the trick to it. This has no, this is not going to guarantee you to get your ex back. Okay. First of all, this will not guarantee you to get your ex back. Um, will it help possibly? Yeah. More than most things. What it will do is it will prepare you if the opportunity arises and they make that call to you, right? They make that call and they say, Hey, I just want to see what you're up to. And then instead of you going, oh my God, what should I do? Should uh, should I call them back? Should I text them? I don't want to look like I'm too interested. Oh, oh, what do I do? No, because you've prepared yourself. You've been in no contact for a little while. You dusted yourself off. You got up off the mat. You said to yourself, hmm, I got some issues with my look. So I read a couple books on style. I got some issues with communication and jealousy. So I read a couple books on that. I listened to a few audio books. I listened to a few pod podcasts. And you know what? I got educated on the topics that I was lacking in because I had the extra time out of the breakup when I was licking my wounds to go, wait a minute, instead of going, I didn't know what to do. This has never happened to me before. I said, wait a minute. Is there any good books out there on this topic? Is there some good live streams? Is there some good YouTube channels? So I can mount up, get some knowledge with the experience of failing, and that equals wisdom. Knowledge, experience equals wisdom. Now, a lot of times when I do a live coaching session, afterwards, I'll suggest to people, I'll say, hey, look, these are a few books you might want to read. Now, at this point, if you're watching the live stream, you're thinking, why the hell do you got a helmet on, Mac? Because it's going to get to my first point. And <clears throat> it might seem a little nuts to you guys, but get educated after your breakup. Prepare. Why do I wear this helmet? Why do I wear this helmet? Why does someone wear a helmet? Do I like wearing a helmet? Is it comfortable? Not really. Uh, but I do ride a motorbike type scooter around and I need the helmet because if I get hit, I'm preparing for the fall, right? And if you have an ex, what, you, what you're doing is you're seeking out the, the outcome. And what I'm saying is if you prepare for something to happen, if you prepare for an accident, you wear your seatbelt, right? You, you might have some friends sometimes you're like, put your seatbelt on. What are you doing? You know, obviously you're on a bike or bicycle, a motorbike, you wear a helmet because you're like, you know what? I don't want to get brain damage to split my head open because uh, I've been educated on that. I've seen enough of it happen. But for some reason, people tend to go, what do I do? What should I do? I don't know what to do. They ask every Tom, Dick and Harry a question about the relationship. And then someone might say, hey, you should check out this book or you should check out this individual that specializes in it, right? And then they go, oh, no, I don't like to read. Oh, well, how about an audio book? Oh, I don't like that. Well, then you're stuck in a place where you're going, you don't really want to wear a helmet when you ride your bike. You don't really want to prepare for what's next. And now here's the good part when you prepare, right? And where I'm going with this is I'm not, I'm not preparing you, okay? I'm not preparing you for that moment that you believe that they'll just come to your door, your ex will come to your door and say, oh, I've, I've been missing you for so long and the no contact's really gotten to me. I'm not preparing you for that. What I'm preparing you for is actually them not coming back, them not knocking on your door because you win both ways, right? 
For example, if I wear this helmet out, right? It's not a beautiful helmet. It's not for style. But first thing you think is like, yeah, you got to wear the helmet. Because if you get in an accident, it will protect your head. Secondly, police will pull you over and give you a ticket because it's it's part of the law. So if you don't wear, if you don't wear your helmet, you also have to pay someone and you'll be breaking the law. So there's two reasons that you prepare and wear your helmet before you go out. And it's pretty cut and dry. But for some reason, people don't do this when they break up. They don't think about, how should I prepare for my future as a single, as a single individual? Instead, they go, oh, what if they come back? Oh, uh, what, if they come back, I can do this. And, and damn it, you know, it's going to be really cool when they come back or it's going to be so sad. But in the meantime, it's time to get your knowledge on. It's time to go to a library. It's time to get some audio books and really dig in and look at where you have deficiencies. So after I talk to someone in a live coaching session, I think it's time I could probably take off the helmet, right? After I talk to someone in a live coaching session, I'll send them books to read and check out. And sometimes I'll be like, oh yeah, maybe I'll check those out. And the reason I'm pretty well read, okay, and I've, I've, over the last four or five years, I've just inhaled uh, audio books left and right. I've read a lot of books. And so when I suggest to them, like, I've actually read this book. It suits you and your situation. And some people, like I said, they'll go, uh, you should put some advertising on that helmet. And Monica, that's why the hair has an effect, because I have to wear a helmet when I go out in my bike. So preparing during your breakup, okay? Preparing during your breakup. Get your helmet on before you go out and ride your bike is what I was saying earlier if you just came on. These are all things you prepare for a lot of things in your life. You just don't know. It's subconsciously built in. You get in a breakup, all you can think about is getting back, going backwards and trying to put out the fire. But the reality is... <clears throat> You don't need to prepare for your ex to come back. You need to prepare to be a strong single individual moving forward. And if you meet someone else, not maybe now, not this week, not maybe in three weeks, not maybe in two months, but maybe like six months down the line when you start to heal up or three months or two months, I don't know, three weeks, you start feeling a little bit better. You're going to want to start approaching someone or you're going to have someone approach you and you're going to want to be in a position where you're not like, oh, I just got out of a breakup. I don't think I can talk to them. So what's the best way that you can prepare for that situation? What's the best way you can prepare for that situation? Right? It, it's not going to be, oh, yeah, uh, he left me and uh, he's such an asshole. He's a narcissist. He doesn't communicate well. All this stuff that you just throw out there and you're just like throwing darts. Right? And I've heard it all before and I'm compassionate and I listen. But this is not what this this video is going to be about what this video is going to be about is like at what point do you go you know what i failed or i lost or i messed up but if if i get another shot not at this individual but maybe at a good relationship i'll, I'll kind of want to have, be a little bit more educated a little bit more knowledgeable so if i step back into this situation not necessarily now or today but like in the next couple months I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm feeling like, oh, I know how to react. I know how to walk away. That's a big one right now is the ability to see red flags or see a situation where they don't really check off all the boxes and you're like, wait a minute. I just need to end this right now. Oh, I don't want to be mean. I don't want to, you know, no. If you continue on and you continue to build a relationship and build a little bit of connection here and there, but the person really isn't your cup of tea, they're really not all that you, you're looking for, you're settling. And the same thing we do with the job, right? So a lot of times with a job, the way of the superior man, he talks about this, he goes, you'll, you know, you'll come across opportunities, right? And if you're in a, if you're in a bind or in a bad situation, you have a, you, this isn't a bad situation, it's circumstantial. But let's say you have a kid and you, you need a job, so you can't really be picky. Your relative comes to you. They go, hey, look, I got a job bagging groceries at the local deli, um, whatever. And you go, okay, I'll take it. 
You end up over there for two years, you're miserable, you hate it, you feel like you wasted all your time. Well, you didn't have the ability to go out and say, nah, that's a that's a good opportunity to just get some quick money. But you know what? I'll wait. I'll wait and I'll kick it in high gear and actually be proactive and look for my own leads on jobs. But I really appreciate that, Uncle John. But people do this all the time. They do it all the time and they do it when they start dating again, right? They <clears throat> put themselves in these situations where they're not prepared to be to be single again. Now, I remember a long, long time ago when I was going through this harsh breakup that I had that I relate to a lot of you guys on. I'm not carrying it anymore, but I understand where you guys are coming from. And I remember thinking, wow, I haven't been single in like five years. This is, feels like no man's land. I felt a little uncomfortable. I was like, wow, I'm going to have to start approaching women again eventually. This is this is just feels kind of awkward. And I actually intuitively, uncomfortably said, all right, I'm going to I'm going to get some stuff on dating and, and picking up women. And it wasn't like, oh, now I'm going to I'm going to be a pickup artist. I'm going to do this, this and this. No, I, I needed to re-educate myself and reacquaint myself. And I thought, wow, this stuff I should have read a long time ago because it kind of pertains to my relationship that I just broke up in. And from reading some of those materials and those books and a couple of manifestos that were online, because there's a lot of this information is the same for, for dating and attraction and whatnot. It's not brain science, folks. There's, there's, you know, there's only so many things that are, are about human attraction. There's not many times when I went, whoa, I haven't heard that one before. Um, but to be reacquainted at the point of a breakup with what attraction is and how it works, uh, is a really smart thing to do. And a lot of people have never even put themselves through it. They, cause what happened is their first love or their first relationship was, you know, they ran into someone at school, they ran into someone at work, they were attracted to each other, bam, wham, bam. They're together for two years, three years. It doesn't really work out, but they didn't really you know, meet 10 different individuals. They just took the first person that came along that was interested and kind of had a relationship with them. And that's why it didn't really work out. And they, they gave in a lot to the relationship because they thought, well, this person's the one in reality, they didn't really look around long enough to decide, actually, it takes a little bit of time to meet a good match. Right. And it takes a little bit of time out of a breakup to, to get your gusto, to get your juice back. Right. And so, in that time, that's the time you want to knowledge up, start reading some books. You don't like to read. You know what? I had trouble with reading to relax and sit there and read. If it's something I'm really interested in, I can. Um, Audio books have absolutely changed my life because I go to the gym or drive and I'll listen to them and it subconsciously drips into your brain and it's a lot more memorable for me. Obviously, I must be an audio learner, right? And so with that available now, you, I can listen to one or two audiobooks a week. Easy. So, you know, where I'm going with all this, I don't think a lot of people are doing this. I don't think they're embracing the fact, all right, I can't date right away because I'm I'm brokenhearted. I'm feeling bad about myself. Identify your deficiencies. Identify the chinks in the armor. Okay. Identify where you feel really insecure. And then get a book, get a podcast. It's never been a better time than the 21st century to find information and gulp it up. It's never been a better time. There's actually too much information on some things. Get a highly rated, highly reviewed book that's a classic on the topic. We do it all the time for business, right? We have self-help, self-improvement, some of these kinds of things. But the reality is, are you picking up books on dating or these kinds of things? Specialized books. There's a book um, you know, for people that have been out in um relationships and someone cheated on them or they cheated or there was cheating in the relationship. There's a book called state of affairs and it's a really good perspective that she explains as a psychiatrist that, um, it's a very common thing and that it's not as sinful as people make it out to be. Now people would disagree highly with that, but on the flip side, it's a nice perspective. If you want to get some knowledge on it, and when you get knowledge on a new topic, you should be seeking out voices or books that don't really line up with you completely. And then look, and then say like, actually, there's a couple of things in there that I was kind of closed minded about, but changed my mind. And so whenever I go through these things with people, I'm always recommending books about their, their situation. 
Someone just told me, I, I want to change some bad habits I have. Atomic Habits by James Clear. Outstanding book on habit changing. Okay. If you're going to change your career, this is another thing that goes along with um, breaking up. You're in the middle of a breakup. You usually reassess where you're at in your life. And one of the things is your job, your career. Uh, half the people I talk to, either, either their partner or them, has issues with their job. They don't like their job. And a lot of times, the interesting thing is it could be a high status job, like a doctor. Um, there's a gentleman I always remember. I was like, wow, you're a doctor, you know, uh, a highly ranked doctor. And he was still young. He's like, and when he said it, he was just like, yeah. I said, do you like your job? No, I really hate it. And he didn't like all aspects of it. But to the outside eye, it's like, wow, you're a doctor, you're superior, you're, you know, it's a noble profession. The reality is he didn't like it. I said, well, let's, let's unpack that really quick. And that thing, that particular thing as a single individual is easier to tackle than when you get married, have kids and have a house payment. Wouldn't you agree? And he's like, yeah, within six months, he had had a new post at a new hospital. He had approached his superior and he had confronted the issue. And he was like, yeah, you're right, Mac. Thanks, thanks for pointing that out because that was really hindering my relationship and bothering me. So I'll circle back to some of this. People that are on deck, welcome. This is my second live stream of the day and I'm really enjoying them. So I think this is the morning for a lot of people. So I thought maybe some other people would be able to catch on to this. So, hey, Jersey girl, how you doing? Um, you should put some advertising on that helmet. If you didn't see the beginning of the post, I came on with my, my motorbike helmet because I was saying, when you go out on the bike, you are preparing. Preparing for an accident? No. You actually are, right? You're saying, like, worst case scenario here, I might run into an accident. The The possibility is probably lower than and it is higher. And I'm saying, when you become single and you're like, oh, I'll never meet anyone again. Well, until you do, it'd be nice if you read some book like The Tactical Guide of, of Meeting Women by Sean Smith, uh, so that if you do come across someone at a grocery store or at a counseling session or wherever you guys go, you're like, oh, shit, I got a couple knowledge nuggets that I didn't know about before. All right. This is preparation, folks. And for myself, coming out of that breakup, and I, I read these different things, it wasn't about a year... A year and two months, year and three months, I had a new girlfriend, which was just fine because I had, I think after after healing and having my issues and being upset out of the breakup, because um, it was five years and it was intense. I was like, and when I was start ready, I got start, I started dating again. All the dates were bad, like most people, they're shitty. But in the process, I was gaining knowledge. I was practicing. I was going on bad dates. And I was reading some new things and I was the one or the one in the moment, because like I said, I don't believe in the one of your life. But um, when I meet one that's really special, I'm going to be prepared. And I was, I was the time that I met that next girlfriend, I was on point. I, and I was, I was making all the right moves and it was showing up for a high value girlfriend and it worked out. And if I didn't get my knowledge through books, reading, dating prior to, like if I had that, that would have been my first date, I wouldn't have been ready. I wouldn't have been prepared. And it ended up being a really good relationship. Okay, so hello everyone, Jersey girl. Hope you are well. Doing good, Monica. Just tired. Hope you hope you are doing well. Got it. Uh, people should try to look at the positive. Find something good about the job until something better does come along. Isn't that what dating after a breakup is all about? Um, that's a good question. What I would say to that, and I've been there before, if you're waiting for something to come along, is there a way you can be a little bit more proactive um, rather than waiting for an opportunity to be presented? Um, you know, Are you putting yourself in areas and places where you might be able to meet someone new? I read men are from Mars, women are from Venus, but didn't get much out of it. I think it's because it needs to be updated for, for modern times. That's an old book. My, my dad and mom had that book. I think it was gifted to them. So I remember that being on the mantle like 25, 30 years ago. I haven't read it. I'm not familiar with it. 
I'm sure some people like it. Some people don't like it. Uh, what I would say, there's an individual, Sam Harris, who's highly educated. He said, you know what he does? Now? He reads a lot. And he said what he does, he says, I don't have a problem if I read a book for a chapter or two chapters and I'm really not into it. I just I just discard it. Um, and I've done that with audiobooks. Like if I'm listening to an audiobook and I really am not vibing with it, I'll, I'll just go, you know what, I'll, maybe I'll come back to this later, but I'm not going to spend time listening to something for the first two or three chapters that I'm not vibing with. Um, and, and don't waste your time on something that doesn't because then you're going to go, oh, I don't like reading. No, you just didn't like that book, right? So <clears throat> if you guys have any interesting books you want to recommend, I know that Monica's recommended uh, – spiritual graffiti in the past. I haven't read that yet. There's so much stuff out there, right? But what I would say first and foremost, identify where your insecurities, your deficiencies are, things you want to work on. For men, it looks like we have a lot of women on right now based on who's who's making comments, which is just fine with me. Um, for men, a lot of times it's picking up new women. Oh, what should I do? I just started dating this girl or I just started dating this woman and or my ex just contacted me back. What should I do? And that's... That alone, where you're in this kind of like, ooh, what do I do? Uh, it's really uncomfortable, and you're going to overthink things. You're going to overcompensate. And when you first met your ex, who was your girlfriend, who was actually just a single individual that you met at the first time, you probably didn't have that. You probably didn't have that, right? You probably went into it. I was just talking to a guy in a live coaching session a couple of days ago, and he was like, man, the crazy thing is, he goes, is after, he goes, when I first met my girlfriend or now ex, he's like, when I met her, I could care less. He goes, we met at the gym. I was like, yeah, what's up? Da, da, da. We, we had some mutual friends. He's like, yeah, that, it was great. He goes, but, uh, you know, I didn't really care less. I'd been seeing a few other women and I wasn't an asshole, but I was just like, yeah, here's my number. Yeah. Call me up. And he goes, I, I was fine. What's up, Michael Anthony? I like the name. Actually, <laughs> I got a family member that's named Michael Anthony for the um, for the middle name. That's funny. <clears throat> well, welcome. I'm, I'm glad Kyle turned you on. Kyle's good people, man. I like his channel a lot. That's kind of him. He mentioned it in a live stream or a video. Um, let me know, Michael, if you're new to the live stream, if you have any questions. I do talk about a topic, but that doesn't mean you can't ask other questions. Um, and a lot of people in these live streams seem to know each other. We've got a little bit of a tribe here. It's definitely a smaller group. I think Masculine Energy gets more people. I think he's got more subscribers, which is just fine. I'm very happy for him. He's good people, like I said. Um, so you have the ability here to, to um, chit-chat a little bit more and get more of a direct response um, because there's less people. He mentioned you in a live stream. Okay, cool, man. Cool. He's been in a couple of my live streams and contributed very well. So let me know if you have a question for me, if you're in a breakup right now or you're in a situation, or if you'd like to talk about the topic today, is there anything I'm assuming, uh, which I don't like to assume because assuming makes an ass out of you sometimes that you're in a breakup or you're some, some kind of holding pattern. Um, and is there anything you're doing knowledge wise? And I'll ask everyone that's on right now, if you guys want to uh, chime in, um, is there some piece of knowledge that you've picked up, whether that's a book, a podcast, um, an audio book within your breakup time that's really helped you out and has really taught you a few things besides this live stream? Um, where you've said, wow, you know, I didn't look at it that way or I didn't know to use this process or because for me years back, like I said, it was there was a it was a how to get your ex back manifesto i think i got it like the 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 first or second week out of the breakup and there's this is 10 or 12 years 10 10 years ago plus and so they had these things you just you just um you just uh printed it out i think it, i think it was like 40 dollars actually but it but it wasn't just about getting your ex back it had things about attraction and different things and i just remember going oh wow i should have I should have re-upped on this a long time ago. I told, you know, like this, this is, it's kind of like, you know, when you study in school and they say, oh, they never teach you this in school. They don't teach you about relationships in school, right? They don't teach, like if they just taught you the basics, if you just had a basic, co basic course in college, I think in college we had, 
at San Francisco State, which is a highly liberal school, highly liberal school. I think they had a course just on on sex, um, and it was it was interesting. I don't remember a lot about it, but there was a few things where I was like, "Wow, I didn't know that," or "I didn't know this." And it was a big. It was like in an auditorium, uh, but they didn't have anything on relationships or what happens when you break up. And I think that that would be absolutely useful to just have a few of those gems in your pocket. But here's the thing about breakups is people don't really uh, understand them till they're in one and they don't really care about them till they're in one. And then if they've had one before and they've had it affect them in a, in a big way and someone else is in one, they're like, Oh, Hey man, let's go get a cup of coffee and have a chat because I've been there before. <clears throat> Well, thanks, Monica. I appreciate the backup. Tommy Willis has been on Mac. Um, he wasn't on this morning. Uh, a few days back, I believe he was. You even know the names of some of these people. So, like I said, let me know out there if you guys and if you guys are watching this after I post this video. And thanks for. Thanks for recommending. I just had earlier today uh, a woman said, hey, Mac, make sure you post because sometimes I put a top 10. Today I'm not going to put a top 10 of books, but I think I'll do a part two to this and I'll give you guys my top 10 books currently for um, being in a breakup. But what I would add to that in my experience is getting to know you through your breakup story and getting to know you in a live coaching session or even on this live stream and you convey to me some of your problems or your issues, it's almost like a prescription a doctor would give. I'd go, okay, read this book. Eventually, I'll have my own book. Eventually, I'll have another channel with book reviews. That's in the works right now. But currently, I have no problem going, I think this book would work for you. I literally have people contact me back, and they go, wow, thanks for putting me on to that book. And it's a little different when it's just not your book, right? If you Some of the people on here, I know Monica's uh, college-educated. I th you got a master's also to it from a prestigious school, by the way. Um, it's impressive. Um, but what was college? I've been a teacher for years. I've been a teacher at the university. Level. What was college? What was university? Uh, most of the time they'd go read this book, this book, and this book, buy this book, this book, and this book. A lot of professors do buy this book. It's my book, Right because it's, it's my book. That's how they make extra money sometimes. Um, and so now, you know, you just study those books, you write papers on them and you do different things. When you're looking for knowledge on a particular topic, you don't have to go to the library. You don't have to be in university anymore. You should get recommendations and read good books, a body of work that dissects and unpacks fully what your issue is. I've never heard of that book. I'll actually write that down. Expectation Hangover. That sounds interesting. What's that about, Monica? The Expectation Hangover. Hmm. I like that other one you said, Spiritual Graffiti. Was that the one you mentioned before? If you could, when this video gets posted, if you have the time, why don't you put that in the comments if possible? If not, you don't have the time or it's kind of a um, hindrance. Expectation Hangover. I like that. I know that there was another woman that was, um, she's no longer in any of the live streams, so maybe she got offended or doesn't like the show any longer, which happens. I don't know. But she was always saying the scars, something the scars. I had it written down somewhere. Expectation hangover. Is this expectation hangover in regards to um, a breakup or – Okay, Michael has a question. Michael Anthony, my ex reached out after 27 days with a direct indirect message. I left her carry I let her carry the conversation. I threw in some humor, got a few LOLs out of her and then let it die, but I'm scared this was 3 weeks ago. What are you scared of, Michael Anthony? It's not a very good situation to be scared. And were you contacting this individual within text? Feel like I feel like I got a pen in my hand now and I'm taking a, a police report or something. Michael, continue on. Tell me the facts, son. <laughs> um Michael, you, you if you want to continue though, you might what you might want to do 
masculine energy or Kyle is his name. Um, I'm not sure of his approach or what he has when you guys, I'm not sure. I, I don't think he does the same thing, but my approach is to send in your story. So if you want to send in your story to my, she texted me. Okay. So you got LOLs out of it. If you, one of the things I would recommend is to send your story in to my website. Um, and then I can give you a tailored response on what happened. Because before, like right now at the stage you're at right now, I, and it's hard because the live stream only allows you so many characters because it's not the platform to put a full story. I can answer basic questions like this. Um, but if you're scared, why are you scared? Would be my first question. What are you scared of? Um, secondly, I would recommend to write out your full story of what happened during the breakup. Send it in to writemac.com. I'll respond in a YouTube video. If you want that public, if you're okay with that, it can go public. If you want it private, that's a paid service. Um, some people don't want to share everything, but usually that's a good first step. And then you'll maybe fully understand why you're scared now. And maybe you can address the fact that, uh, is this a relationship that you're chasing that it's not fixable or the problem is going to be hovering for a while? Spiritual graffiti. I'm going to put that on my list. I hope it's on an audio book because that's primarily how I, how I ride with, uh, spiritual graffiti. I like the name though. That's a fucking cool name. It's funny. It's such a cool name. Then he's got a plain name, Jeff Brown. I'm writing it down. Good. I got some. I'm. I got some books to read too. I've, and I want some different stuff. You know. It's so funny because I like watching um, interviews that impact theory. He's got some really interesting guests. He's kind of a, a weird dude. It's. It's like he wears these. He talks about. It's interesting because when you go on YouTube or you put yourself out there, everyone's going to uh, be a spectator and make comments. But he's worth the guy, the guy that runs impact theory. I don't know if you guys, have you guys seen impact theory on impact theories? It's a YouTube channel and he interviews, you know, top performers and doctors and different things. And he always wears these absurd expensive shoes he has to wear different pairs of shoes and he wears dog tags around his neck he's just got this weird style um he's supposedly worth like three or four hundred million dollars and he made a production in his house and he gets really good people on he does ask good questions but here's the funny part i think i mentioned this in a live stream right he has this surgeon doctor on uh, excuse me a brain surgeon doctor on well, I'm like, wow, this is interesting because anything with neuroscience, I'm interested in. That's a subfield. When I was younger, I used to like history and anthropology. Uh, I'd say right now, psychology and I'd say neuroscience, epigenetics, these kinds of things are really interesting to me. Um, how the brain changes itself by, um, what's his name? Brian Dewage. Great book. Great book. Um, how the brain changes itself. Anyhow, I lost my train of thought there. Sorry, I had, I had the phone. <clears throat> so this brain surgeon, okay? This brain surgeon's on. He's, you know, he's kicking his knowledge. He's going on, and um, he's been a brain surgeon for X amount of years. He's plugging a book, and the guy's like, all right, so uh, what, do you, what do you think? Uh, what are some of the foods that you should eat? You know, because, you know, you're like, tell us about the foods, and this is a chapter in his book. And what do you guys think he said? What do you think he recommended? Dun, 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 dun. What would he recommend as the food for your brain? Uh, I would eat a lot of vegetables. Fruits are good too, not just vegetables. So salads. It's like, he's like, I know it seems like, you know, a lot of people. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, a lot of people know that this isn't brain science. And salmon because of omega-3s. I mean, how many times have you heard that one? And, you know, I thought to myself, Probably sometimes people are asking, yeah, Mac, you always mention no contact or you always mention this. So you repeat yourself too. And that's why your individual story is really important because that's where the nuance comes in um, <clears throat> when you're not getting general information. And I'll add another thing that he recommended highly to everyone for, for optimal brain and for mindfulness, meditation. And here's, here's the ding, 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 ding. 
at the very end, it's like, what would you recommend if you have one thing to recommend for people to think more clear and have, you know, a better lifestyle? Well, I don't want to say exercise, but that would be probably number one. <laughs> it's not brain science, right? <laughs> oh, my God. I'll definitely send you my story. There's lots of details. This has been so hard for me emotionally. The depression is so bad right now. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Let's start with your story. If you want to write a longer story, then do the private because just in my experience, just in my experience, people tend to share more honest stuff from their story when it's private. If it's public on YouTube, they tend to leave parts out and then tell me later on and they try to send extra emails. And I'm getting to a point now where I'm more busy. I go out of my way for everyone. I think people that have been on this channel for a while now, I over deliver. Um, but sometimes I got to watch it because I start opening up the door and it's like, it's time consuming, but I do want to help you. But at the same time, what I've noticed in doing this for a year and a half, almost two years is that when you do, when you do, why are you recommending blocking your ex? I'm sorry. What are you at? What are you asking about uh Jersey girl? What is this pertaining to? Can you give me a detail of that? I don't, I don't know what you mean. Uh, what I was going to say is when you do pay for a service, you do get more out of it because you put more into it, if that makes sense. I love academia, but nothing like real life to teach you things. Absolutely. Well, wisdom is knowledge plus experience. And so you've, you've met PhDs before that appear to be quote unquote smart. I don't know if they're wise because they're usually lopsided. They lack experience and they're very um, practical, but practical doesn't always work in the real world because humans are impractical a lot of times. Correct me if I'm wrong. Michael, you get money. Thanks, Monica. Good evening from the Tassie Devil. Man, Dylan, you are loyal. Why are you why do you recommend? How are you? Why do you recommend blocking your ex? Are you asking me that directly or in regards to what, Jen? Can you elaborate? expectation hangover it's about any kind of situation where your expectations are not met breakups jobs thanks jersey girl i appreciate it i think her techniques align with yours oh really okay because because i i definitely talk about coming from a place with no expectations when you're when you're meeting someone new right and that's you know, that's where you're, it's, I don't want to say you're, you should have no expectations because when you're in a relationship, I think you're going to build some expectations. You're going to build some of those, but going back into a breakup, you're back at ground zero. When you start something new, your expectation should be within yourself to have a good time and build a connection. Attraction is not going to be fully in your control, but, um, what's up G money. Headed to work saying, hi, everyone. Mac, I've been doing sleep hypnosis videos on YouTube and it's been helping for real. Was that a recommendation for me or was that something you tried on your own? Because that's some Michael Seeley's really good. He's really good. Um, hypnosis is big, bro. That's that's like a shortcut. Um, hypnotherapy is big. I'm, I, I listen to a recording on hypnotherapy every day. I'm getting deeper and deeper with it. And I've made some real some real strides. Some real strides on some things I wasn't letting go of. Your videos talk about blocking your ex on social media and such. What's the reason for blocking? Um, okay, so I recommended that. Well, I'll take I'll take credit for that one. Thanks, bro. I'm glad it I'm glad it helped. Um, because some people are like, oh, it's just another youth. I I mean, there's other ones on. I think he's one of the best. Um but it works, man. It helps. And that's free because that, that kind of a service, the only thing I'd say, G-Money, if you really like that, if you get one tailored to exactly what you want, it's a little bit more powerful. But the ones that um, the ones that Michael Seeley does, I mean, he does an hour, hour and a half for free on YouTube. Shit, man. Some of them might line right up with you. So that's great. What you want to do is you want to be consistent with them. Um, and they're good for helping you to sleep. Cool, man. That makes me feel really good. Cause I remember you mentioning like you're, you're still kind of in that mouse wheel a lot. Well, soon enough, I won't even see you in the live streams, huh? But this is what we were just talking about the earlier one in this morning. I said, sometimes, you know, people 
talk to me for a month, two months, off and on. They send me emails and they just kind of disappear. But that means most of the time they got over with their situation. And then like six months, seven months, I'll be like, hey, man, I just want to say thank you. And that's that's nice. That's nice. That's a major plus in my job. Um, I'm sorry. So I want to address what you asked me, uh, Jersey girl. Your videos, you talk about blocking your ex on social media and such. What's the reason for blocking? Okay. So it's case by case. A majority of the time, if you have your ex on social media and you have the ability to spy on them, you have your ability to check in on them, you will. And when you see a picture, you have an open loop story that you put a narrative to that's not true. You don't know what it is and it will drive you nuts. Secondly, if they are able to see you, then a ton of people go, oh, they liked my story or they liked my post. What does that mean? Could mean they just liked your post, right? I, you know, people use social media and don't put a lot of weight on pictures like you do maybe. And so what you're creating is passive communication that it's basically like, It's basically like you're getting a puzzle piece and then you, you don't have access to any of the other puzzle pieces, but you're trying to put them all together. And then eventually you'll just go, yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, that picture they're with, um, they started seeing someone from work. I know it. It's like, no, that's just what you assume. And then you start asking people questions. It's better to be out of sight, out of mind. It's better to not have that information available while you're broken up because number one, they have a right to see someone else. Number two, it's not really any of your business. Number three, how is it going to serve you moving forward? Now, if you're an individual where you broke up and you're like, you know what? We had a great relationship. I'm so happy for them. I wish them nothing but good grace and good luck. And if they meet someone new in the future and post it on Facebook or Instagram, I'm so happy for them. How many people you know can ride like that? I, there's an exception to every rule, but there's not many. Correct me if I'm wrong. So that's why. Do you guys understand what I mean by an open loop? This is a psychology thing. I, I'm sure Monica does because I think, Monica, you have like a master's in psychology, right? I mean, it's just how the human brain works. We want an ending to everything. We want to figure out everything. And so every time you get a fragment, you're going to put a story to it. And if you're in a negative place or feeling bad about yourself, let alone you feel like you got dumped, which is an extremely negative way of looking at getting broken up with, Right. Oh, they dumped me. Uh, I would prefer that you guys broke up instead of saying that one person's the victim and one person's um, the other person. You got to be upfront about it, about what happened, but putting a label like, yeah, they dumped me. That's not going to help you moving forward. You say, we just broke up. We had some differences and they decided that we couldn't grow together. That's a much better way to get it. Getting ready for lunch. Life is beautiful. And so are you, Miss Sabina. I wish you all the best in Italy. Life is beautiful. What a great slogan. What a great slogan. So Michael Anthony is saying the open loop is a killer. Uh, so what you have to do is create less open loops. Um, you know, breaking up, if your friend goes, hey, do you want some, do you want some information about your ex? I'd say no. Do you want me, do you want me to tell you what happened? Last night I saw her at a dinner with, her with a group of friends. She was hammered. She was acting really stupid. Why would I want to hear that? How is that serving me moving forward if we're both single? I would actually, like if a friend went out of their way to tell me that or a friend went out of their way to tell me, I mean, it's nice if the friend goes, do you want me to, do you want some information? Um, that's a better way than just saying, hey, last night, you know, so-and-so I saw her with this guy and that guy. That doesn't serve you. How does that serve you moving forward? All it does is create a mystery. Sabina, I'm jumpy after watching a scary movie. Okay. You're funny, Dylan. You're a funny dude. <clears throat> so what I can do is share really quick a couple of things I wrote down. Jumpy. What does it mean to be jumpy? Anxious? Um... So like I said before, 
a lot of you in the live stream or you're watching this video after the fact, if you have a particular problem or any of you on the live stream, let me know and let me see if I can come up with a book that I can recommend for you or an audio book. And I really think it's a game changer in the world now that we have so much access to audiobooks. It's a it's a huge game changer for me. Huge game changer because sitting and reading, you do need to find a quiet place. Listening to an audiobook, you can do while driving, especially it changed it changed my life because I, I had a long drive for a while, about 40, 45 minutes, so not too long. And I, in listening to audiobooks, it was like killing two birds with one stone. I didn't block, but I did unfriend. I thought he had his settings set so that I couldn't see his post, but I guess he took it off. I can see his, but he can't see mine. Well, that's as long as, as long as you have strong feelings, as long as you have really strong feelings still, you don't want to be in that person's energy or, or tracking anything they do because it's, it's going to be highly volatile. Yeah, just stop. Where's your power, Jen? Because mm, it just takes one story or one picture to, to really upset you. Um, it really does. And so don't put yourself in that position. It's like I, t I tell people all the time, if you're going on a diet, if you're going on a diet, you don't want ice cream and cookies in the fridge because you'll eat them. Uh, Mac, are you familiar with the book, The Rationale? Outstanding book. I recommend it all the time. Uh, I think it's great, especially for – for men in their 20s to early 30s. Um, but I just recommended it to a guy in his late 40s um, that has nice guy syndrome, and he knows it. He's just ultra, ultra nice. Um, and we we did about a two-and-a-half-hour live coaching session and unpacked everything. And I, I do recommend that book often, right? Um, and it's, it's, it's one of those books – it's one of those books that um, he takes such a different viewpoint than a lot of other people, and he's not very politically correct, right, um, for, for some people. <clears throat> um, but a lot of the things he touches on in there, especially one-itis where everyone believes in a soulmate, there's some things that line up for me. But I would say if you read Rational Mail, I would read The Tactical Guide to Women by Sean Smith that's a little bit less abrasive, if you will, because I, I don't, I don't necessarily want you to pick one book and just have that roll the roost. I would pick two or three and then take little tidbits that you like. So no more Mr. Got nice guy by Dr. Robert Glover is like a 20 year classic for guys that just are too nice. And so I, I recommended this book right out of the live coaching session. The guy let read it that week and instantly was like, Holy shit, this is me. And he, he was almost like smitten. He was jumpy, Dylan. And we talked the next time. He was like, I can't believe this. And he just didn't, you know, this is kind of stuff that I study, uh, that I work with people. So I can easily say like, oh, yeah, check out this book or check out that book. I don't know if the rational male, I mean, women can read it. I don't know in some cases if women would be, would be offended by some of the things he says. Because um, some people at first are like, I don't think this, this guy that's um, – this guy that is, um, uh, I just lost my train of thought because a text came in. This is what happens in the live stream. <laughs> Stuck. <clears throat> Excuse me. The guy recommended the book, No More Mr. Nice Guy. The next book was The Rational May. It was, Mac, honestly, I'm looking at this. I don't know if this book's for me. And I'm like, that's why it is for you because it's a different perspective. And then he started reading it and he's like, oh, man. He goes, um, there's a term in there called average frustrated chump, AFC. And he goes, that's me too. And he kind of got a kick out of it. And I'm like, that's why you have to read it. Right. Seth Drow Gloves, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark, Span Mark Manson is great. I always recommend that book. That is actually, if you want a great self improvement book that's not over the top, woo woo, some shit that you've heard a thousand times, I would go with The Subtle Art of Not Getting a Fuck. The sequel, Everything is Fucked, I didn't think it was as good. It was good, but it wasn't as good. Um, and my, and if I had to pick between the two, I'm always going to recommend the first one. And the funny thing about that, um, and, and welcome Seth drop gloves. 
the bare knuckle boxer. I don't think I've seen you on a live stream. So welcome, bud. If you had any questions, but thanks for the recommendation. Um, I agree hundred percent. I love the first chapter. Stop trying Charles Bukowski. And he just tells great stories. And the first chapter of subtle art of not giving a fuck, it's like, stop trying. And it's not about your ex. It's about life that you're trying too hard to be someone you're not to do something. You're not really all in on. And, um, actually I'll tell you if you want, if you're deep on some stuff, uh, one of the, one of the guys I listen to before I go to sleep is Alan Watts, Alan Watts as a lecturer, um, as a lecturer, because I've been teaching at university for years is absolutely brilliant. I mean, and he has this tone, but the way he explains things, he's a real philosopher. Alan Watts is a genuine 20th century philosopher. If you, if you uh, YouTube search Alan Watts, there's a ton of his university lectures. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And he's mentioned in the first chapter, actually, of um, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. He is, man. He is. He's great. He's great. I mean, he's a real philosopher. I don't think because we always talk about like um, Plato, Socrates, all these people are ancient, man. They're ancient and, and they're good. They have a place. OK, they have a place and everything like that. But like it's nice when you hear someone you're like, damn, this dude's 20th century. All this stuff's recorded. These are lectures he gave to university students. Brilliant stuff. Really articulate. Has a sense of humor. Um, highly, highly educated. He used to live in Sausalito on a boat too. That's what I always like about him. He used to live on a, I always would want to live in a houseboat somewhere. That's fucking cool in Sausalito. And he has this one where he's like, I have a university. I can't do his voice. I do impressions, but his voice is, it's like smooth English accent. Smooth though. And he, he talks about um, students coming to him, asking about what they should do. Like for their career, for their job. And he's like, it's simple. Do what you love and make it a job. <laughs> but he says it so eloquent. He says it uh, in such a way and in such an example, in such a tone. Um, like I said, he's brilliant. And sometimes right before I go to bed, I'll listen to one of his lectures uh, because the way he puts things, it's not necessarily what he's telling you to do or what's not to do, but the examples he gives man seth where where are you from in the world if i may ask because this is a different time usually than i usually do and I'm, I'm hoping that you know some people that aren't usually able to watch the live stream that i usually do is that why maybe the uk or so, oh my god are you serious this is amazing i i would say that 30 percent of my live stream people are from south carolina or north carolina this is amazing i don't know why oh that's no problem jersey girl i don't judge you i don't judge you you know every 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 question for the most part is a good question if you don't know um everyone is from there on the uh, I get a lot of people in live coaching. Where are you from? North Carolina, South Carolina. A lot of them had moved from somewhere else before. The good people, though. I take it as a compliment. Always nice to talk to. A lot of the people, though, I do talk to are from somewhere else and have transplanted over there. Um, so it must be a good place to live. So have you, uh, Seth, have you sent your story in to me before? <clears throat> It's almost like graffiti names, right? Some of these names. Brandon Hunsell. My ex is welcome, first of all, because I haven't seen you on a live stream before. My ex is adamant. She doesn't want us, but she reaches out consistently, mainly has her daughter call me to tell me she misses me or good night. Random question. What's the question? She obviously wants to keep you engaged and she wants to keep you in her options. And she probably doesn't want, she wa probably wants to make sure you're not seeing someone else. And in the meantime, uh, if she meets someone else, she has the door open for herself. That would be my short answer if I was guessing. If I had your full story, I can give you a re better response. I find that selfish to use her daughter. If you guys are broken up and it's not your daughter, 
and you had a relationship and you made an effort with her daughter, I find that selfish on uh, um, a number of levels to involve the daughter in calling you up. Um, uh, <clears throat> isn't that, does anyone else find that selfish on a couple different levels? That's a character flaw, man. Um, to, I understand if you, you were, you were someone in the relationship, Brennan, you, you know, you were there for the daughter and whatnot, but if you guys are going to break my thoughts, exactly, I don't know how to appropriately handle it without being rude. Uh, well, you're definitely not going to be, if you're a, if you're a gentleman and you're a good guy, you're definitely not going to be rude to the daughter, right? That's an, that's just non-negotiable. So she's putting you in a, in a, in a tough situation. That's not fair. Now, I don't know the dynamics of how long you guys were together and how deep your relationship with his daughter is. If you want to still see that daughter in some way or something, but if you, if you want to get over the relationship and she's moving on and it's her daughter, you're probably going to have to end that at some point. Right. And I would highly recommend that you say, Hey, look, you talk to her separately. You call her without her calling you and you say, yes, Hey, look, I had a really good relationship with your daughter. I care about your daughter. This idea of having her call me up and say she misses me at night, if it's true or if it's not true, I don't think it's appropriate if we're going our own ways at this point. It's not good for me. It's not good for your daughter because I'm not going to be a stepdad and also just be your friend. It's just selfish. It's manipulative. Um, Seth? I would recommend that you go to my website, um, go to the services page, and you can send the story there. If you want it to be private, that's a paid service, but you can write a longer story if you're okay with it being public. Um, I do recommend a $25 donation. If you can't do that, it's fine. I usually will put it in with clutch. Clutch, huh? What does that mean, Brandon? I'm clutch right now. Um, did you like the advice? I'm thinking of all the. I'm a huge NBA fan. I'm thinking of all the clutch players in the NBA. At the end of toxic, at the end of toxic, I I would say that's clarity of the kind of person that individual is, because I've never been in a relationship. Full disclosure was where someone has kids, and I like kids, and I and, and I'm good with kids. And so I'm sensitive to that because that would be very difficult. But at the same time, it's absolutely not fair to you or the daughter. That's someone not taking into account other people's feelings. <clears throat> she shouldn't be putting kids in. No, that's crystal clear. There's some things, there's very few things um, that I'm like, you know what? No, there's a lot of things that I talk about with people and their breakups. And I say, I'm not the moral police, but there's certain things like, Physical abuse, um, not not necessarily like with a kid, but in a relationship, that's a sensitive issue to me. That's something that like is non-negotiable. You can't explain that to me like, oh, yeah, it was because of this. It's like, no, you don't hit women, period. Um, that's just the way I was raised, and I, I've been around uh, some tough things and family relationships and different things, and I, I just don't have any kind of – bend on that and using kids or manipulating kids in relationship and situations like that. No, no. Uh, uh. Other, other things, you know, as far as adults and behavior goes and different stuff like that, it's like, well, as, a, as two adults, there's more, uh, flexibility in, in what you believe and what you don't believe. Right. Love the little girl to death, but I know prolonging is only going to hurt her. Her mother apparently doesn't think. Think. I. I mean the fact that you do. If you wanted to prolong the relationship because you did, you'd have that right. But you wouldn't be going about it like she calls you up at night and wants to say good night. At some point, if you guys are going your separate ways, you're gonna have to sever ties, right? Because you're not gonna just be a stepdad and and the woman's friend. You could, certainly could do that. But that would be your choice to make. 
that would you that would be you saying to her, you know what? We've had I have this great relationship with your daughter. I'd like to keep it going, and maybe on Saturday I'll pick her up and take her to the park. Okay, that's your prerogative. But to just call you up randomly and on you know nights during the week and say, hey, she just wants to say good night with you, but we're still broken up. <laughs> And I get it, but that's not an ideal situation. That's not an ideal situation. But you, you, if you're thinking of her, of the daughter long term, and you're not going to be in the picture, <clears throat> maybe Brandon, you want to send it in your story also to uh, writemac.com. Maybe I'll give you more of a tailored response. Maybe she's afraid to reach out herself because she thinks she's mad. He's mad and won't talk to her, but he will the daughter. Well, here we go, Jersey Girl. Uh, Brandon, Jersey Girl is giving a scenario that's possible. Um, but until I know, yeah, it's a possibility, like a scenario. And I'm not saying it's wrong or right. But that's when I say, like, <clears throat> if I was going to give you further advice, I'd need to know the whole story or at least a summary of the story. And then that's when you get a tailored response. And, folks, that's – at the base of my work is that there's a lot of generalizations online. Be, you know why? And I'm not going to say YouTube channels as a whole because generalizations are easier to sell to people. If I tell you, oh, do X, Y, Z when you break up and I have a playbook, you're like, all right, give me the playbook. It doesn't work that way because you have two individuals that are different personalities and different backgrounds, different morals and values. And so when that lines up, you need a tailored response on what's going on in your particular relationship and how you look at it. And so I can give you a short answer, I call it, um, but it's probably not going to be as accurate as if I read your story or did a live coaching session with you. <clears throat> I think grownups should be able to talk openly. Well, you would think, right? <laughs> You would think, like I said, if everyone, if I had one model, if I had one thing as every human being could do, myself included, and I have to check myself at the door now. This is something that goes on in my head. If I gave you one model to follow in relationships, lead with good intentions, be honest. How does that sound? <laughs> right? Have virtue. On the night of my breakup, after I, I calmed down from wanting to smash my room, I wanted to call my ex, talk to her. But I didn't know what to say. I wanted her to back that badly. If you let someone play mind games when you will never grown, grown out of the kind situations. Yeah. I actually come back to that a lot in my own head now. That's my little trademark saying to myself. And when someone's questioning, like, what should I do? I'm like, well, let's lead with good intentions and be honest. And when I say be honest, why not be honest with yourself? And then secondly, when you're stuck, where's my power? What can I do here? Like, I've done it. Plenty of times in my life, we sit there and go, oh, they did this, they did this, this person's an asshole, they're a jerk, they're this, they keep doing this. I just had it recently with a neighbor situation. I'm like, God damn, I complain, I complain. And I'm like, wait a minute, where's your power? <laughs> it's not a breakup, it's just like, what can you do about this that's proactive that maybe you can get a win-win situation for you and the neighbor? And I came up with a couple different solutions. I haven't put those on the table yet, but afterwards, I'm like, there is some power here. It's not like I'm you know, instead of me just pointing out the obvious of what a jerk the person is, stepdad and friends could be extremely confusing to the daughter, though. Uh, it was love at first sight for us, you could say. Well, good for you, Dylan. Love at first sight. I don't know if I've ever had love at first sight. I definitely have been attracted at first sight. Uh, it takes me a little bit longer to love someone than just to see them. But everyone has a different definition of love, so I'm not saying you're wrong or right. Um, I know some people say that sometimes I've definitely, you know, I've had a couple of girlfriends where I'm like, Ooh, you, wow. And I'm just like, for some reason they're attractive, not just maybe physically attractive, but attractive in the sense that they've got my full attention for some reason. Um, and that's someone I want to know. That's someone I want to talk to more. <clears throat> well, I'm glad we got a few newbies here with Brandon Hunzel. And another person from South Carolina. It's random. Um, Mr. Seth 
drop the gloves. I had a, actually had a f- couple of people from Clemson, Clemson University. I was giving them coaching at the same time, actually. They had their Clemson shirts on. I didn't know Clemson was in South Carolina. I know it's a private school. It's a good school, right? It's in South Carolina, I believe, right? Myrtle Beach, do you ever go there? Seth Drop Gloves. Mary's not on deck today, but Mary's uh, works over there. Do I believe in uh, love at first sight? Uh, no. Love? Love to me is something that takes time. So in relationships that I've had, uh, and it's probably because when I was a kid, we didn't do a lot like, I love you, mommy. I love you, daddy. We didn't do that a lot. So it's not something that's conveyed regularly. It was just the way I was raised. I think Corey Wayne talks about this in his own life too. It's not that uh, I'm against it. It just doesn't come out easy. And so if I'm dating a woman and I'm official with a woman, um, I won't be like, oh, I'm in love or I love you so much. It takes me some time to say those words. Um, so to say that it's at first sight that I love them, no. No, I wouldn't say that. Am I interested? Am I highly attracted to them? Yes. Different for me. I was nothing but a gentleman. Well, a gentleman never tells. I remember a friend told me that before. I was like, "That's you guys used to go out. We were younger. I'm like, you guys hook up? He goes, a gentleman never tells. Good for you. <clears throat> And this has been good, folks. I think you need to get to know a person first before you love them. For me, that's why I'm saying love at first sight for me doesn't apply. No. And that's not being a jerk or anything. That's just that's just how I am. I wouldn't say, oh, I love that person. I love them so much. Hmm. You like your you like your symbols, huh, Sabina? <clears throat> It's been storming here all day, folks. Hope the weather's good for you guys. Clemson is a good school. Yeah, it is. I just know it from watching college football and stuff, you know, off and on. It's about an hour. I used to have a beach house in Myrtle Beach. Sold that. It's no fun maintaining two homes after the lure of vacation home wears off. Still visit. Well, there's a – there's a, if you come on the channel again, Mary – she does pedicures and manicures over there. She's always saying, let people know if they're in South Carolina. <clears throat> Myrtle Beach is supposed to be a nice place, though, right? That's just so crazy. Another person from South Carolina. That's cool, man. I mean, if I ever targeted, um, someone was telling me that you do targeted Facebook ads. I don't do any of that right now. And I was like, I'd probably do South Carolina because 30 or 40% of uh, some of the people in the live streams I've done coaching calls with, I don't know where it comes from. And I would say more people from South Carolina than North Carolina. I actually had a neighbor that moved to South Carolina or North Carolina when I was in the Bay Area. Great value there compared to California as far as the housing prices, I've been told, and just really nice places to live. Well, good for you having a beach house, dude. That's pretty cool. Man. Is South Carolina where they have the – don't they have a Marine base there? My father was in the Marines, and uh, he said he went to South Carolina or North Carolina, I think, for training before Vietnam. And so it's a lot of people from South Carolina because San Diego is also the other place. I used to live in San Diego, so a lot of people, if they're ex-military, um, I'm not saying that you are. Charlie H. Don't know if I've seen you before, but I've always liked the name Charlie. Charlie Holmes. Recently blocked my ex. Everything as on everything as the hope she might contact me was preventing me from moving on. Well, that's outstanding. That is absolutely outstanding, Charlie. I like the way you phrase that short, concise, to the point, and with the objective in mind. Recently blocked my ex on everything as the hope. She might contact me was preventing me from moving on. Outstanding. Outstanding. That's exactly why you block them. It's not because you're trying to use it as a tactic to 
get them out of the bush and, you know, come see you. Uh, it's a tactic for you to move forward because it's impeding progress for you. So, Charlie, I do commend you. You are the superstar of the live stream for today because it was short, concise, and to the point. And so many people ask me counter or have some counter reasons for not blocking them. You're dead on, spot on. Virginia Beach is where? Virginia Beach is in South Carolina. Is that where they get trained? Are you... Are you ex USMC and and Navy too, Sabina? It's like when I was young, and uh, you know, someone would come over and they go, "Oh, you, you, my dad had like a Marine hat or something." And my, I was a little kid, and you'd say, "Oh, my dad was in the army." You'd always be like, "No, it's the Marines." My dad has a tattoo, USMC, Paris Island. I think he, I think he got trained there. Is that in South Carolina? Um, it's 65 and sunny here. Wow, the 65, that's a nice day in New Jersey. In Jazzy. My ex grew up in Somerville, South Carolina. Okay, no. No problem. Um, random. Yeah, pa okay, Paris Island. Um, yeah. Yeah, he said he got sent out there at eight. I think he was, I think he enlisted at like 17 and a half. Well, I like Charles and Charlie. All right, Charles. The, um, it's much more sophisticated to be Charles than Charlie, right? <clears throat> but that's outstanding, dude. I love the way you phrase that. I'm serious. I'm not just trying to blow smoke up your ass. Okay, like I'm not just going, oh, that's great, man. No, the way you, that's exactly, exactly the reason to block them. Exactly. It's preventing me from moving on. Thank you. What part of Jersey are you in? I'm in I'm in Bucks County, PA. PA. I've been to PA before. My aunt used to live in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, out where the Amish lived, I think. Been to Philly before. South Jersey, Cumberland County. Sounds more like a Boston accent, huh? <clears throat> PA, I've always wondered why Pennsylvania goes by PA. Nice state, though, huh? BMOC, BMOC009. Uh, that's an interesting tag name there. I'm having trouble balancing logic and emotion. I know the things I should be doing. I know the rationale, but emotions take over and push out my logical thoughts. You're familiar with Coatesville? <laughs> Actually, if you know who Richard Hamilton, the basketball player, is from a years back, I think he he's from there too. It's a little, it's a little town. Always stood out to me because there's no fences on the backyards. Where I grew up in California, everyone has a fence in a small yard, and you had those electric bugs, those bugs that light up at night, and out of ground pools. That's what I remember about uh, Coatesville, PA, the above ground pools. Nice people though, nice people. I'm having trouble balancing logic. So let's unpack this. B mock, B M O C 009. I'm having trouble balancing logic and emotion. I know the things I should be doing. I know the rationale, but my emotions take over and push out my logical thoughts. Excuse me if you heard that. It's a little air burp. <clears throat> well, number one, let's not try to fight it. Uh, what are you fighting exactly? So I, I don't mean to be a broken record, but if this is a breakup story, maybe write out your breakup story so I could maybe give you my take on what's going on. What emotions keep bubbling up and what's the triggers for those emotions? Um, and Because, for example, if you're stuck on an emotion, you're probably stuck on the reason. So Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. The whole point of the book is finding meaning in everything that serves you. That doesn't mean making the meaning rosy. It means meaning it, making it mean something significant or something you can live with. So he uses the example in the book because he's in a um, Nazi. Oh, wow. That's not far. He's in a, a Nazi prison camp and he gets through it and whatnot. And he said the people that got the reason he got through it is he was a psychiatrist that wanted to print out this, this book 
And that was what helped him live through it because he had a purpose. But he also explains it's called logos therapy. It's something that I've studied before. It's not really discussed, but logos means meaning. And you need to find out what meaning you're giving to those emotions. For example, if someone feels betrayed, I've noticed this recently. I know someone that I've been working with that they, they believe their friends always betray them. And so they always find ways to find out that their friends have betrayed them. But really, they're just running a pattern looking for reasons that they betrayed them. People that are jealous, they will constantly be looking for information to make that person guilty. Now, if you're stuck, if you're stuck, what's your reason for what, you, what are you clinging to? The reason for the breakup didn't make sense to me. When This is it. You have an open loop. The ending didn't make sense to you. Went on break. She said things were better. She said she reached out. Has She said she'd reach out. Hasn't. Waiting for her to reach out. Having hope because there wasn't a fight. Uh, I'd have to know more details to give you a tailored response. Uh, because even when you write that, that's an open loop for me. I, I don't have enough information to know what goes goes down and what and what why. Maybe you want to send it into my website. Uh, I have a friend that I met through my ex that I can't talk to on the phone because she spends the whole time laughing at me saying I have a Jersey ex. <laughs> I think accent accents are actually cool. There, I guess I suppose there are some that are annoying or people don't like. Um, I have a few friends that are, that are English and have British accents and actually people from different parts of the UK all have different accents. But, um, I always say they're like celebrities in the States. Everyone likes a, a nice English accent. Jesse Chapman. What's up, buddy? I was thinking I might see you cause this is usually a time frame that's better for you. I hope you're well, bud. Um, bmock009. If you want to send your story and I've already wrote this, but you can go to my website. Um, how would I close the loop currently? She said she'd reach out when, when ready. So I've been in no contact for four weeks. I like, I feel like the ball is in her court trying to let her go. But well, the whole problem is, is that you're waiting for a response. Uh, I don't know what happened in the relationship. So I can't really say the likelihood of her reaching out. Or I can't say what, are, you know, was the relationship a good relationship? Did you do something wrong? Um, why would she contact you back? Yeah, I'm good smashing the jiu-jitsu solves everything, just arranging a date with someone outstanding, dude. It does. It's it's you know, folks, it the gym or exercise is a broad topic. So when I say to exercise or go to the gym, so oh, everyone always tells me that. Well, do it. And you don't need to you don't need to be a marathon runner or you don't need to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. You just need to get exercise every day. But I will say this if you hit the gym hard, it definitely absolutely helps with the way you look, the way you feel, and the way you deal with your ex not being there. And if you do it over three or four months, you'll look a lot better too. I find hitting the gym does wonders. Maybe I'll have to come to America and find a woman who loves my British accent. They usually do. My buddies that have uh, lived up, lived over in the States. They're like, Oh yeah, that's all I needed to do. The, the funny thing is, you know, living, living abroad, like myself, I don't live in the States anymore. I live in Thailand and I meet people from UK or something. And they always want to talk, not, not everyone, but a lot of European. Oh, uh, what about Donald Trump? I'm like, I don't even watch the news. I don't get into that. Really? And, and when I meet someone from the UK or France, I never think about your politics. I never ask you those questions. It's kind of funny. People in Europe always want to ask about Donald Trump or people like, what do you think about him? You know, he's got a big effect and he's so stupid and he's this. It's like, just met you 10 minutes ago. Like, what's this all about? And like I, I tell people, like, if, if someone met you in America, they'd go, cool accent, man. Have you ever, have you ever, Charlie, have you ever watched Idiot Abroad? When they had take the English guy and they put him in different situations. That's a great, uh, great show. And he's like, I'll never forget, he's in America. And he goes, I don't understand. I don't understand why everyone in America says awesome. Oh, it's an awesome burger. It's nice. It's a nice burger. It's nice. It's okay. And knowing people from the UK, that's exactly how a lot of them are. Is that <laughs> and I and I and I can understand because now that I live abroad, I'm like, yeah, sometimes um 
Americans or certain areas are like overdo the, it's awesome. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. It's so outstanding and super great. Uh, and, and Canadians are similar in that sense. They just put some extra sauce on everything, you know? It's aw- and, and I was saying before, like, I don't remember the Serbian Express train, um, but I just remember, I think he was in Alaska. And Americans are always nice, though. They're, you know, they're kind and stuff like that. And, yeah, and sometimes people say I'm similar because I have um, – more of a dry sense of humor or sarcasm. And I tell people, people will go, I don't get it. I can't tell if you're joking. And I'm like, yeah, that's the point. It's called, you know, like the, if you don't get it, it's, it's humor for smart people. <laughs> um, it's not, it, it's not, when you live abroad and stuff uh, like I do, and you meet a lot of foreigners from different places, it's just a different outlook totally. Um, but that, that shows great, huh? Um, it's, it's, it's not awesome. It's nice. It's just nice. And I actually use that sometimes Nottingham. Oh, Nottingham university. I almost, uh, did an online program with them a, long, a while back. <clears throat> nice. And, S- and Sabina noticed he didn't go awesome. And it was so funny. Uh, I don't, I don't really like that word that much. And someone, um, someone that wrote me a story one time, Daniel, who comes on the live stream sometimes, Cali, Cali Flower or Cali Floor, um, he always he always says awesome all the time. And um, he's like, I know you hate that word, right? It's like I don't hate it. I just don't like the way it's overused. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. That's awesome, man. But you know what? It's just a word. Everyone uses words differently and – if someone says it, I'm not like, oh, I don't want to hang out with this person. I can't believe they're talking that way. Uh, Sabina writes, so you could be an idiot with a British accent and women in the U.S. will like you? No, uh, not necessarily, but you'll seem very much more interesting. Um, what made you leave the U.S.? I was just going to come over here for a year to teach abroad. Um, and Thailand looked like a beautiful place, beautiful beaches. Um, and so I said, I'm just going to come over here for a year and see how it goes. And then I was planning on moving back to California. It was just like a, a year abroad, my, you know, and then I ended up coming back for a couple months and I really missed, missed it. Came back on another job here and, uh, just been here ever since. And people always go, are you going to be here forever, man? It's like, what's forever, right? I'll move again, probably. I don't know when, but right now I'm I'm pretty comfortable. I like I like where I live. I live five minutes from a very nice beach, about a 10, 15 minute walk. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's been good. <laughs> British accent is the access to anywhere. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting about a British accent? I didn't know this. Now I got a, a group of buddies from um one of my good friends is from Holt. Another one's from Yorkshire, or Yorkshire is a county, right? I have two or three friends that are from Yorkshire, but they say it's Yorkshire. They say you say it wrong. They're a dry lot, right? Very sarcastic. Um, we get along really well, though. They're like, um, yeah, one of my buddies is, the, and they'll go, if you ever want to go to England, and I'm like, it's not on my list. <laughs> And one of my buddies has like a nice place. Like, Mate, if you ever want to go there, you can stay. You know, he's got it. I'm like, yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd maybe go to Ireland because I'm a McCarthy. I'd go to Cork. That's where my family name is from. You know, I was close to my grandfather. So that'd be really cool. Um, but nothing against England, but I'd rather go to New Zealand, uh, Argentina, Argentina's high on my list. I've always heard good th- I've always heard good things about New Zealand, Argentina. Like people that are world travelers, I meet them a lot where I live and they always love Argentina and New Zealand are like the two top places. Um I'd like to go to Polynesia all around there cuz it's just in the middle of nowhere. My niece and nephew are Tongan and Samoan, so that always interests me. I had a lot of friends growing up that were Tongan. Um, and you look at it on the world map and you're like, wow, there's just nothing around there. That would be neat. 
I suppose Spain, I always hear good things about. Actually, a random one that people that travel a lot tell me Iceland's really cool. I've heard of that more than once. Again, not on my list, but I've heard good things. Usually, Robin Hood is the first thing mentioned when I say I'm from Nottingham. Oh, I didn't even think about that. My ex messages my mom, mom frequently asking about me. I wish she would just message me. Well, that's passive aggressive behavior. I'm not American. So no, so no awesome. It is an American term, right? Hey, Mac, is there a cost to writing the story? Um, you'll get a, you'll get an email back where I'll ask you for a $25 uh, thing. Currently, uh, if you're okay with it being public on YouTube, I will do a public response if you follow the directions. If you want to make it a private response, like a private YouTube response, then that's $65. So the private response enables you to write a longer story. And in that longer story, um, you probably will convey or give divulge more details because it's private. So, But the one that um, if you're just going to write your story and you're like, you can make it public, I don't use names. Um, but keep in mind, it's going to be on YouTube. So some people go, oh, that's great. It could help someone else. And then afterwards, if you find it useful or helpful, I'll say, hey, if you'd like to make a donation, here's my donations page. And the minimum donation is $25. So I didn't put like a $1 donation up there. For some reason, when when I had the, the website made, um, the person put that one in there and they weren't able to, I don't know, there's something with the donation thing that that's just what's the lowest one. And so if you don't want to, then you don't have to. But um, most people with a lot of class usually leave a donation. <laughs> Um, and I get to their letter first and I probably do a little bit more, uh, better job on it. So that being said, if you really are having trouble, I do recommend doing a live coaching session at the end of the live coaching session. I'll ask you is, was this useful and helpful? Because I'm not going to get your ex back or cure you. Jesse's been on a live coaching. Um, and if you say no, I'll say, well, give me your details and I'll send you back your refund on PayPal. That's confidence, right? Um, Jesse, what do you mean pull the pin? Yorkshire is pronounced Yorkshire. Yeah. I just think of pudding. Um, it means get rid, mate. Do you have kids with her? How can I get rid? I can't control my mom and ex. Uh, you can sure no, but we're together for four four years is a long time. You might want to send your story in too. Um, I mean, your mom and your your ex can talk. I know that when my ex broke up with me, or we broke up together, whatever you want to call it. And she sent like my mom a card or something like that. My mom was like, oh, I don't know what to do. My mom was like nice to her. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. You guys can correspond. I don't want to get, I don't want to know what you guys talk about. Well, what's the reason why they still talk? What's the reason why they still if you're if your mom's close to your ex, they have a right to continue to talk. But at some point, if it's you know impeding a relationship, my mom and her were close during our relationship. Well, that's that's between them. As long as you're not getting details back or your mom's trying to uh, get you back together. At some point, if it makes you really uncomfortable, then I wouldn't make an issue with your mom. I would tell her, look, it makes me uncomfortable that you call my mom a lot. At this point, we're in a holding pattern, and I just don't like hearing from my mom about it. No, she left me. Sorry to hear that, bud. Okay, but there must be a reason why why it is. Okay. Spain, yeah. Spain, yeah. You know what's really close to my house? Do you guys know what Cafe Del Mar is? I guess that's a really famous club in Spain. Where I live in Phuket, there's a Cafe Del Mar like five minutes away. It's the only other one in the world, I guess, which supposedly in Spain is a big deal. Sabina, you know that place? She just texts my mom asking if I'm okay and all. She's a queen. Good morning. I'm on one and a half hours here. Well, then she's guilty about something. She just texts my mom asking if I'm okay and all. Well, she, uh, Ollie's RTS Gaming. Have you been on before RTS game? That sounds familiar. And here's my take based on what you're talking about. She cares about you. She loves you. But if she left you, um, the love and care is still there, but it's not necessarily meaning that she wants uh, 
to get back together or pursue or anything. And so if you're in a space where you want to get back with her, having that kind of information probably hurts. If you guys didn't see the beginning of the video, I had my helmet on. I just looked over it. Did you see that, Jesse? I, today I started the video out with my bike helmet because I was saying this is how you prepare. If you guys didn't, if you guys missed the beginning of this video, one of the big parts was uh, preparing to be single, preparing to maybe not just meet your ex in the future, but meet someone else. And by doing that, you want to read some good books and get some good knowledge. And why do you wear a helmet? You prepare for possibly getting in an accident, right? Stupid question, Mac. Why would you start off that way, Dylan? Come on, bud. You're better than that. Every question's a good question. Even if I don't know the answer, I could say, well, that's a good question. I'll get back to you. Have you ever been nagged by a girl trying to win you over when you didn't have feelings for her? Um, the first thing that comes to mind, I was nagged by a girl that I did have some feelings for, but the feelings were innate, erased by the fact that she was nagging. <laughs> I, I, I'm not one, I'm an independent person, always have been. And so uh, clinginess or uh, like, where are you right now? It was th this girl, she was a nurse. She was good looking. She was sweet. You know, friends that met her, they were like, wow, she's bad. You know, she was cute. She really liked me. But it was just like, where are you right now? What are you doing? It's like, that's not how, that's just, I've just never, it, I've never been that way. And then on top of it, it was like, uh, oh, I just went to, you know, this, I just went um, to visit my friend and he comes back and gets me like a teddy bear and stuff like that. And it's like our third date, just buying gifts and stuff. It just, it seemed too quick. It was very needy and very clingy. And someone told me like, what happened with, what happened with her? And I was just like, Phew. and then one time this is, we were just, you know, we were dating one time. Um, I was at a pub with a friend, a mate, a Kiwi, New Zealander, and she came in and she was like, you told me that you, you told me that you were, you know, you couldn't go out or you couldn't do something. I was like, what? This wasn't even my girlfriend. We were just dating. You know, we were intimate, but, and she like came and like swung her bag, like on my back. She didn't like belt me or hit me hard. I was just like, just didn't even react. I was like, all right. And like, after that, I was like, <laughs> it's curtains. We're done. You know? You know why? And I didn't sit there and go, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't make a big deal out of it because I didn't do anything wrong. I just what I wasn't interested in answering to anyone. We're dating. Um, so that that's what comes to my head first. That was annoying and nagging. Uh, where are you right now? What have you been doing? Uh, you know, I'm never I've never been someone like when I'm in a relationship that uh, we text or we talk five times a day. Never, never. And the women I've been with in the past, they like that. They're similar in that sense. I'm pretty sure distance is what killed us. She lives in California. I live in the UK. Well, that's a big one, dude. Where do you live in Cali? You live in the Bay Area? You live in Southern Cal? I used to live in the Bay Area and I used to live in San Diego. Um, oh, she lives in California. Okay, I'm sorry. The thing about long distance relationship, Ollie, is that they have an expiration date on them. And if you guys aren't planning on living together, someone gets tired of the lack of intimacy, the lack of being in each other's presence, the lack of not being there. FaceTime and texting only goes so far. And eventually someone's okay with it. And the other person's like, nah, this is getting old. And so the odds are against you prolonging that for much longer. You should have done a top 10 recommended book list. I will do one soon. I didn't do one today. Um, I will do one. Yeah, all these different cities hard enough. Never mind other side of the world. Cafe Del Mar, yeah, it's in Ibiza. There's one here. There's only two, I guess. There's one right by my house. It's pretty cool. It's a nice place. You prep for war like it's your last day. There's no emotion on the battlefield. Well, that's pretty fucking deep, Jesse. You would know though. Fair play, bro. Thing we oh, you're talking about you when I had the helmet on. Well, I'm saying, I'm saying when you get single, when you break up, prepare to be single. It hurts. It sucks. What I was saying in the beginning is don't, don't prepare necessarily like instead of 
wishing that your ex comes back or waiting, uh, prepare to be single and that you're not going to necessarily meet your next relationship. But when that, when that train or bus comes, you're ready. And I said, like when I had my worst breakup, it was like a year, two, three months later. And then, then the next high quality woman that I really met that I really would want to be in a relationship with, I was ready because not only did I date prior to that, go on bad dates, but I was, I was soaking up knowledge. I was reading different books. And so I didn't just jump into it and go, Oh, this is the first, first time I've seen someone I'm really interested in. Now you need some practice prior to, you need to get some knowledge in base and then you're ready. Then you're prepared and then you're able to move into a new relationship, even though it's not right away. Thing is, we had our plan to close the distance after four years, then she left, but you hadn't closed the distance yet, right? A lot of, uh, I'm not a fan of commercial tourism, nor, neither am I. Ollie, do, do a live coaching session, mate, unpack it, speak to him and open up. Jesse's done one before. We had a really good session, right, Jesse? North Carolina is a nice place. Come for a visit. It, it seems like a nice place. It seems like a nice place. Great college basketball, right? That's what I always think about. Michael Jordan, Duke, North, uh, UNC. Charlotte's there, right? I've always heard Charlotte's really nice. I had a client that was from, grew up in New York, lived in Florida, and then he moved to Charlotte. And he's like, it's just beautiful. So I have a friend who I just found her guy and isn't even officially divorced. Great guy. How come some people have all the luck? So I have a friend who just found her guy and is even officially divorced. <laughs> Monica, how long have they known each other and how long have you known this guy? So you're basing this on, you just, obviously it's fresh, right? You That that book hasn't been, hasn't ended yet. You, you're, you're already may, pay, playing fairy tale ending how many times like how many times i remember when i was a kid like really young and my aunt had this couple that were friends and they were just nice they were they just seemed even when i was like eight or nine years old they'd come over the house and it was like rick and jen i forgot what their names were and they were just nice people and you know everyone thought they had this great relationship great you know the dad was great with the kids i don't know got a divorce all of a sudden all of a sudden rick's an asshole Oh, Rick drinks more than everyone ever thought when he gets home. Shit's more than meets the eye. I'm not, I'm not trying to be negative, but the idea that your friend, before she even got divorced, just met this great guy. Everything's going to be great. It's going to be rose petals and wine glasses. Well, as right now in the present moment, it's like that. But And you look at it from the outside in, and you're like, oh, God, they're so lucky. It's not luck. Um, she probably was in a very good place at the time, and she met someone. There's, there's all kinds of dynamics there. But... If they met and they've only known each other for six months, they don't know each other yet. So that book hasn't been written. Um, so in the moment, instead of saying, how come some people have all the luck, the better thing to be Monica would be like, wow, I'm really happy for my friend. I hope it works out for them long term. It's not It's not luck. I don't, I don't believe in that with uh, meeting people. I believe being prepared. I believe being in a good place. And let's face it, the better you're at, the better person you are, the better. This is deep. The, the more contributions you make to humanity, uh, the better you feel about yourself. That's the core, too. Where's your significance? Where do you help other people out? And wh wh what do you mean? Are you just doing jobs for money? Are you just an ends to a mean? Are you doing stuff that's deeper than that? Like Jesse's in the military. He's a serious military guy. Um, he has a deep purpose about what he does. He has a real passion about it. He does jujitsu. He Now, not everyone's going to go, oh, that's passion or something, but he's got a purpose. And so he's going to be able to pivot out of a lot of relationships if he has to because he has something deeper. And it's like you ask Jesse, who are you? It's like I'm a, I'm a military man. I, you know, I'm Air Force or whatever it was. I'm sorry, Jesse. I don't know. I thought it was Air Force. But – it's very, very cut and dry. Uh, but this idea that people just get lucky, I, I don't, I don't, and don't take that the wrong way, Monica. That's just an opinion. So if you think I'm jumping on you, I'm, I'm not. Um, but it's not as cut and dry. Like she went, met a great guy. She's going to be great for the rest of her life. It's like, no, uh, the honeymoon phase is still around. The amount of people I said here, like we were together for a year and then all of a sudden, it's like, well, that's when you got to know the real person. The wrapping came off the present. 
We spent around a year and a half in person together, spread across the four years. Well, that's not very that's that's not a normal healthy relationship. That's you guys uh, at some point. I hear this a lot in long distance. Ollie's is, oh, we were planning. You know, we were planning on living together. You know, you didn't do it yet, though, right? Did you keep pushing back the date? It's like at some point disappointment, waiting, you're opening up more and more inevitably that someone's going to meet someone else or someone's going to get sick of the long distance. It's just the law of averages. The girl who I don't have feelings for has sex to me. Yes. I can be all night trying to get me and trying to get in my head. Well, if you don't like the attention, then block her. Yeah, thanks, Jen. I was ready to move to a city I hate for her and just makes me realize I was way too dependent on her and wasn't living for myself. Well, that is that is a blessing in disguise, Charlie, because you don't want – it's a big deal to live somewhere you hate. Your environment, the city you live in has a big effect on your happiness. So the fact that you are willing to live somewhere that you know you don't like that much, you know, like you, there's sometimes you can move somewhere and you're like, I could see myself being okay with this. I can adapt and it's only for a year. But if you're like, I hate it. And London is a particular, you know, it's a metropolis, right? It's a particular kind of city. You probably know what it's like. You're not into it. Then, you know, it's like me. I, I probably, I wouldn't want to live in New York city. I wouldn't want to live in Bangkok. Or one of, I'm, I'm not a metropolis type person. Some people love it. Not me. I wouldn't like that. Well, an almost debt free Mac five months from now, I will be. That's outstanding, Jesse. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Last time I was planning a town trip, I asked her, did she want to hang out? Hang, and she asked me, how would I feel about a relationship? I was like to myself, what the fuck, man? She ain't giving up till she gets. <sighs> <Could be. laughs> Dylan, you're a funny guy. Hours I sat there, pen to paper. How do I get rid of this? What's my next step? You're talking about your debt? Well, that's you unpacking your problems and facing them and taking responsibility and accountability. Good for you. Jersey girl, just friends, and trust me, she won't get me. So so Dylan's playing hard to get here. And the penny dropped. Block her, Dylan. Tell her you aren't looking for a relationship if you don't want her. Be honest with her. Yeah, I think Jersey Jen makes a good point. You're In some ways, Dylan, you're acting um, a little bit selfish. You should just let her know straight up like, there's no chance I'm not interested instead of saying, oh, she keeps bothering me. Be direct. People don't know what goes behind closed doors. If she wants me the, that bad, she might as well give up the Tazzy Devil. Isn't a guy who gives in easily, and I got plans up my sleeve for stuff like this. Well, go for you, and people are always the best behavior in the beginning. Absolutely. That's my point. Air Force, that's what I thought, bud. That's what I thought. People are really sensitive to They'll be like, it's not the Army, it's the Air Force. I was like, all right, if I got that wrong. Jersey girl, I'll only do what if she really pushes the handle easy. I literally had tickets for her to come, and I'd start visa process only. Then she fled. Well, this is really difficult, uh, Ollie. It's really difficult, but it's better that it happened now than by the time she moved. And there's something, I don't know the full story that you had going, Ollie, but there's something missing from this. And that's why you have to send your story in to get a tailored response, bud. Because uh, long distance relationships really hurt people when some when you had when you had this go down. But I will say that it's it's I don't want to use the word easy, but it's 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 not as difficult when you're not in the same town because you don't have as many triggers bothering you to move forward. Four years is a long time with close relationships to your family. I understand that. Um, but you, you, it would serve you well. I've heard, I've helped a lot of people on LDRs um, and just unpacking what was said and what was done at the end in a full story uh, really does help because I can, I can see what you're writing and where you're coming from here. You're, you're clinging to a lot of stuff and I understand why. Um, you should at least tell her what you're interested in in a relationship with her. I love all the things I've learned during my breakup. So much had it. So much bad advice out there. Most people don't have a clue how to handle this. I've been able to guide my brother going through this breakup. Oh, you're here for your brother? <laughs> Not for yourself? Wow, that's a really good brother. 
um, I couldn't live in a Jocko is I have a million times. I'm massive city. Uh, we'll just at some point, Dylan cut, cut off ties with her. Every time I roll, I always say jujitsu. Well, good for you. Got you got a purpose. You got something that solves it. I don't like cities. I like the quiet. I like I like the beach. <laughs> I like living by a beach. Always have. It's always been on deck, and I always like to live where some where people go on vacation. That's always kind of a motto. People are on vacation. They're like, "You live here?" I'm like, "Yep." I don't like traffic. I don't like bad quality air. Those are big ones for me. Um, but we always have to deal with a little traffic. Jesse, I'm calling you to kick some ass to my ex, paying very good. Oh, no, Sabina. I don't think Jesse's that low. He's a good dude. I like how you said it's a joke right away. <laughs> yeah, it's a long story. I still get a lot of triggers because she left so much of her stuff in my – I get it, bro. Ollie, I get it, and I would highly recommend – if this is fresh, to do a live coaching session or send your story in the start, dude. Ask Jesse. We've talked before. I would highly recommend it. I'm not going to cure you. I'm not going to, you know, sprinkle fairy dust on it, but it definitely will help in the beginning. Monica, if you're still out there, what I said to your post, I'm sorry if I upset you. If it, if it came off harsh to you, I, I didn't mean it that way. Uh, just when people do the the luck thing a lot, sometimes I'm like, I don't know if that serves everyone. I just recently had someone, uh, Japanese American, um, <clears throat> but she was in Japan and she was saying something about it being a bad luck year for her on based on the stars and some other things. And I'm like, well, you can believe that or not believe that. And you had some bad, bad luck this year, but maybe the bad luck's already passed. We can reframe that a few different ways. And um, she's like, yeah, I just don't know. And then like after a month or two months, she's like, uh, what do you, I was so funny, Jesse. Um, just recently she's turned things around. She's lost some weight. She's feeling really good. And I go, I guess it wasn't all bad luck, was it? Because the breakup turned turned a switch for her to get, improve some things in her life. If she ever brings up the relationship stuff, stuff, I change the subject. I'm experienced with girls like her, sadly. I'm not experienced with breakups. If my dream job does come up, I might be a breakup coach. Oh, wow. Well, welcome to the game. I always tell people there's plenty of room for another breakup coach because there's plenty of breakups out there because I've had people go, well, I could probably do that. I'm like, you absolutely can. Absolutely. Instead of changing the subject, you just need to be honest with her. Jersey girl's not going to let you let you go down like this because what, the way Jersey girl's looking at it, she's like, uh, you're, you're misleading her and you're having fun with it a little bit, Dylan. Sabina... Get your butt to the UK. Let's go on a date. Wow. I've had numerous times. I've already had some people meet on my live stream and actually exchange uh, Instagrams and stuff. Well, that's direct, Jesse. I'll just leave it alone. I'll let the universe handle that. I'm always honest with her, but she don't listen. She'll learn that she ain't getting me. I, I, I don't think I've ever had a situation where a woman was – was chasing me for a long period of time. I just told you that story. I was annoyed after we were dating. I'm I'm pretty clear that a cold shoulder of, you know, not when you, when you give someone the cold shoulder, they kind of get the idea that you're not interested. I, I don't know why this girl keeps pursuing. You if you have no interest, sounds highly needy. Sounds a bit dangerous, actually. This has been a good live stream day. We've had a study, 10 or eight people on deck. Um, this has been good. Seth Drop Gloves from South Carolina. That's always cool. Brandon Hunzel. Michael Anthony. Uh, Jersey Girl Jen. Charlie. So we had a few pe new people on deck. Hopefully this has been helpful and useful for you guys. So we need to get your butt to the UK. Let's go on a date. Jesse's a good guy. He's good people. He's a, he's a character. He's funny, man. 
I really appreciate people when you when you talk to them. And I think what's really nice, one of the luxuries of talking on FaceTime or um, Skype when you talk to me, um, it's like there's no one around. So you can be, you know, if you're in a group of people and you meet someone for the first time, or let's say I had an office and I had a receptionist and I had people in the waiting room um, and you should come in for a breakup, you're going to be like, oh shit, do they know what I'm here for? Oh God, you know, like it's been such a hard time. It's like, you're talking at your house, you're comfortable, no one's looking at you. A lot of times people talk to me in their cars and I don't blame them because, you know, they want, they want, um, they want privacy. And I think this is going to be the future of counseling and stuff because my hypnotherapist who I, I talked with two or three weeks ago, she's a lot older. She, I think she might be 80 actually. She's great shape. Might be 78, 80. Um, she's like, yeah, I'm just starting to do this, but I like people to be in the same room, the same energy. And I get that, but I, I could see the benefit of, you know, talking from your house and being much more comfortable talking about a breakup or a story. Uh, I read people well, Jen, because I listen. I listen intently, and that's a, something I've developed. It's probably developed partly through listening to a lot of audiobooks, but there's a big difference when you listen intently and you, you read into everything. Whereabouts in Spain are you from? Oh, here we go. Little Ronnie Romance, little Jesse. Good for you, Jesse. I've had this happen a few times, and it's great. I, I'm, I'm, I'll have to work on some kind of platform for the people in the live stream that can carry on, I guess, a Facebook group or something like that, which I started a Facebook, Coach Mac McCarthy, but I haven't really done much with it. It's a bit time-consuming, and I don't really like uh, having to do the extra stuff with it. All right, folks, I got 10 minutes left and we hit two hours. This has been outstanding. Thank you very much for the likes. Thanks for the people that rolled all the way through, people that have come in and out. Rome, wow, cool. Don't start an L. Well, good for you laughing, Ollie. Good for you. This is, this is, this is the start. This is a great thing, and I think Jesse can um, attest to this. You come to the live coaching or things like this, and I will get you to smile or laugh a few times, right, Jess? And sometimes by the end of it, um, I'll be like, see, I, I don't think you were, you were feeling that bad. And they're like, actually, a week or two ago before I talked to you, it was really a lot worse. But, yeah, for you to have the ability to laugh or make a joke right there, good on you, man. I like it. Good on you. You're getting sorted, as you guys like to say in the UK. Well, get, your, get it sorted. Oh, cool. Never been looking to do a day trip here in some point. Ollie's not starting LDR. Well, it's not as bad if you're on the same continent, right? It's not as bad as you're on the same continent. <laughs> well, you guys can have some banter and have, be playful. It is, man. Absolutely. It's the way, I mean... It, it, you can't do it all the time, but I, I, I think what uh, people in the UK appreciate with irony and sarcasm is clever humor, right? So, Cadiz. Where, Cadiz is uh, Italy or Spain? I don't know. <clears throat> I'm glad you got that one in, though, Ollie. That's a, that's a win for you right now, bud. Small victories, my friend. Small victories. Small victories, and I've had um, over the last two months. I've been I've been making an effort, and not everyone likes it that I do. Um, not everyone likes it that I've been doing live streams, or they say like, "Oh, I miss the stories, man." Um, I'd like to go to Spain, though. Yeah, my uh, my mother's half Spanish. Robles Robles is their family name. I don't know what part of Spain they're from, though. Um, some lady, too, when she met me, she's like, you're not Spanish. I'm like, well, my mom's half. I don't know how much percent I am. but And she's like, I'm from Spain. That's You're not Spanish. I'm like, okay. Um, where the beach is, I, I am now. 
Rome would be cool though. The Colosseum and all that. I knew I knew someone when I lived in San Diego that was from Rome. Uh, he lived in San Diego. He from Tahoe. Squared away is what I like to say. Squared away, good way to put it. I used to be hot in high school. I guess considering my ex loved me, I just wished her friends weren't around us 24-7. They were actually annoying sometimes. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I love the confidence you had in high school, dude. Good for you. Good for you. Um, it's too funny, man. Too funny. This has been a good, this is what happens when you get to the two hour mark on these. Sometimes it gets a little all over the place, but it's good fun. Any closing questions, folks, for myself? I was in high school jersey. I don't know what that is. These live streams always make me laugh. They are very uplifting. Well, thanks. I appreciate that, Jan, because I know. Um, Based on the story and the emails you sent me, you you got a tough one and you're dealing with it. And so if this helps you out, uh, it's been a privilege to help you out. I mean that sincerely because not every story is the same. And um, you, do, you know what? At the end of the day, folks, you do the best you can in the present moment. <clears throat> Sounds cool. Cadiz. Is the oldest Western European city. Well, I believe you. I've heard good things about Turkey, actually. It's kind of random. I have a client that lives over there. He's always telling me to check it out. Thanks for the stream, Mag. Came here for, from Kyle. We'll definitely be here for more. Well, thanks, Charlie. I appreciate it. And tell Kyle thanks. And I enjoy his work, and I respect him also. Um, and I'm glad it helped you out, bud. Uh, excuse me, Charles. JF Colin, I tried to talk to a girl, no date, but talked to a girl after a week. Well, me and my ex broke up in person that I thought was my friend told her that. And now she met, she's mad at me. And he's, he's telling her lies. I tried to talk to a girl, not date, but talk to a girl after a week when me and my ex broke up in person. And that I thought was my friend told her that. And now she's mad at me and is and he is telling her lies. Well, that sounds like very immature behavior. Um, and that friend just told you who they were. And I would cut anchor from that friend. That would be Alicante Mercia Robles family name. Yeah, Robles. Why do you have why do you have three names? That there's three names as a trinity for that name? But Robles is the family name, R-O-B-L-E-S. Uh, I don't plan. I'm out. Mac, I got to go, go, mate. Speak to you soon. Absolute, Jesse. It's been a pleasure, bro. Do I tell her what, what actually happened? No, don't explain yourself. When is the next live stream? I don't have a plan, but if, I'll make an effort to do more at night like this, Sabina, because this is good. This is really good. Should I used to find a coach full of BS? Not naming any names. It's just nice to find a coach full of BS. Are you saying not full of BS? <laughs> um, you want to correct that before I sign off? What do you mean, gentlemen? Never tells Mac. You never heard that statement? A gentleman never tells? Anyone else want to explain that? It's just find a, It's just nice to find a coach full of BS. Not full of BS typo. I thought it was a typo. Another joke. Good one. You got me. You're blow. You're blow darting me in the in the jungle here. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people that come to me, they're like, at least you you seem like you're telling the truth and you're not trying so hard to cure everyone or give them a. Um, uh, like a playbook, a guy that I just started doing a live coaching with. He's like, I, he's like, I chose you because you don't seem like you're bullshitting or, or, or saying that you're going to cure me. <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, I'm authentic in that. We ended up having a two, two hour plus live coaching. He was like, this is phenomenal. Thanks back. I'm trying and you are definitely helping. Well, you and the crew love you guys. Well, take it easy, hon. I appreciate that. Oh, we got a, we got an LMAO out of you, Ollie. Well, things are looking up my friend. 
Things are looking up. Things are looking up. I'm happy you joined today, Ollie. I'm happy that this time frame worked for you. And how would I get her back if she doesn't know the truth? Uh, you'd get her back probably. Uh, the best thing you could do is move forward and not explain yourself if you don't feel like you did anything wrong. Out there against Istanbul, Constable is the oldest Eastern European city on that part of Europe. That's why I mentioned it because I'm a history major. Not that I know everything about history, but Constantinople um, – was always a city that really interested me to go to based on the history of it. And when you said the oldest city in Europe, I was thinking, isn't it Constantinople? But you're saying Western and Eastern Europe being two different ones. So that's why I said that. No, three names, your name, your mama's, and your dad's surname. Okay. Heart, good knowledge, Sabina. Thanks for letting me know about that, hon. I could tell you're genuine when you don't reply to my comments with quick, I can win your X pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh man anyone that knows me here I'm, I, I am genuine bro i mean I'm, I'm not one of those people when you ask like i do charge money to talk to me in a live coaching session i do charge money for a private thing i do want to make money but i don't want to do it in a way that's bullshit and so uh, yeah no no way dude some of this stuff's just garbage yeah but i'm one of those I'm not, I'm not going to spend time and energy deciding what what's good for you and what's not good for you. There's a lot of information out there. So, If you didn't do anything wrong, then don't explain yourself. Tazzy Devil will strike one day and I'll score myself a girlfriend and she'll be happy to have a gentleman like me for a boyfriend. Although, honestly, I don't care if a guy does as long as it's tasteful. If he wants to say he likes the way I kiss or whatever, it's a compliment. Well, we'll close on that one, Jen. That's outstanding. It's going to be curtains, folks. I got. I just went over two hours. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for supporting the live stream. It's been good. And there's a couple new new people on the live stream that got some support and got some laughs today. So kudos to you guys. Curtains.